video two, maybe three, of my introduction to myself. The main focus of this is cars. And specifically, cars that I've had. I promise that every video I make is not going to be me rambling, but I feel like I need to share where I've been and where I'm coming from in order for anyone to understand where I'm going. My first car I got, I think it was 2009 or 2010, when I first got my license at 16, was a 1994 Honda Civic DX base model. Um, didn't have AC from the factory, didn't have power locks, power windows. Um, when I got it, 95% of the interior was behind the drivers and passenger seats, uh, um, along with countless bags of empty Taco Bell and cups and trash. And it was my first car. It was a five-speed manual. It was, had a fart cannon on it, a lot of spray-painted interior bits. It was, it was awesome. It was something else. Put coilovers on it, coilover sleeves on it, OEM headlights because it had some yellow things on it. Uh, OEM taillights. I just kind of brought it back to what it looked like stock. Put the back seat back in it. Um, OEM door panels, OEM center, everything was back to basically the way it came or the way it should have come. Um, and I just got rid of it when I got my second car, my 2008 Honda Accord Coupe. V6, six speed manual. And I've kind of already went over what I did to that car, so I'm not going to go too much into it here. Um, I kept that car until September of 2013. Um, if you want to check out the wrapping up the Accord story video, everything about that car is in that in that video. 2013, I traded the Accord for a Jetta, brand new. Oh wait, I forgot one. I actually forget about this car all the time because I didn't have it for very long and it didn't really mean very much to me but I got I, I went and got a 2009 Volkswagen Tiguan from a private sale and I still had the Accord it was a 2.0 turbo with a 5 speed manual base model Tiguan I couldn't afford both payment. 19 year old me made these fantastic decisions to trade both cars in for my Jetta. Um, wrap up all that negative equity into the Jetta because there's no good answer for why. But I had that take one for, it had to be a couple weeks, maybe a couple months if that. 2013 Jetta, brand new, TDI, diesel. Twin clutch automatic. It made cool diesel noises, turbo sounds, but it was it was ridiculously slow and tiny, and it wouldn't start half the time. Uh, it had a knock really bad all the time, and Volkswagen didn't want to acknowledge the issue. Again, 19-year-old me said, this car sucks. I paid too much for it, so I'm just going to go get another one. That Jetta and all the negative equity in, for a 2014 Passat. At this point, I don't know how how or why they financed me, but they did. Brand new Gen 3 1.8T in the Passat. Five-speed manual. That was a really nice car. Really nice car. I loved that car. But with the negative equity, it was just too expensive, and I needed to get rid of it. So I borrowed a few grand from my grandpa. And this was 2014, my son was already born, and I bought a 2004 Honda Element. Don't know what possessed me to buy a Honda Element, but I've always liked them. It was all-wheel drive, five-speed manual, it had rubber floors, so you could literally hose it out. It had the suicide rear doors, and the seats folded up on the wall, kind of like the Land Cruisers do. Uh, at the time when I had that, I was, oh, two weekends a month I would work 
an overnight job and I would be gone from Thursday morning until Tuesday after my day job. And I would take our couch cushions off and throw them in the back of the element with the seats folded up. And I, I mean, I'm six foot three. I would sleep in there. I'd bring enough clothes. I'd shower at the night job after my shift. Um, drive back and forth between the jobs and sleep in the car between shifts. And um, it was great. I really loved that car. It was so much fun. The all-wheel drive system was not that good, but it worked. But it was just a cool little vehicle. I got to Ohio. I did have a few issues with it. I spent some money to get it looking good and working good. And it was great. It worked. I fixed everything that was wrong with it. And I was just going to sell it because I wanted a newer car. Also, the Element Seats 4. And we had a baby on the way. My daughter. So, it was time for something a little bit bigger. I bought a 2015 Honda Accord sedan, brand new. At this time, like I said in my previous video about the Accord, I was still extremely salty about getting rid of my first Accord. So I figured this would be like a rebirth, you know, V2 of the Accord, as far as I'm concerned. And it wasn't. This is the only car that I've owned so far that I did not jack up. I did not take any of the wheels off of it. I didn't change anything. About 1,700 miles, I noticed that there was a puddle of oil underneath of it. With about 2,300 miles, when I got back to Virginia, they put a new engine in it because it had a cracked block. I was just disappointed with Honda in general, and I, I really didn't like the car. I loved the car. I didn't like the quality control at that point. Honda didn't do a very good job with that one. At least mine. It, was, it had a lot of little issues. So, again, I got rid of it. Um... While I still had that Accord, I sold the Element because I wanted a Lexus. I bought a 98 GS400 from a friend of a friend who became a friend after I bought this GS from him. Um, this thing was a piece of junk. It had 200 something thousand miles on it. It had a like new 1UZ from an importer but they used a Celsior motor in the GS, so the engine brackets are a little bit different. The Celsior is a lower profile vehicle, so the engine sat about two inches too low in the engine bay, causing the oil pan to ride right on the cross member in the GS. And in order to change out the brackets, you basically have to pull the engine back out, and I wasn't about to do that I ended up getting new engine mounts for it because I thought that was the original problem. And it, it, it fixed the sag just a little bit. Um, and, I, and I went ahead and did like suspension bushings and ball joints because Lexus ball joints just fail whenever they like. It was too far gone for me to put the time and money into when I had you know small children and I, I couldn't just do that with that car. So the guy that I got it from I got this LS 400, 93 LS 400, and he was like, hey, I know that car is a piece of junk. I didn't realize it, but if you want, let's trade. I'll give you, give me back the GS, and I'll trade you for this LS. Yes, the LS was older, but it was in twice as good a condition. It had half the miles. So I was like, you know what, let's do it. I'm cool with that. So we traded cars. So now I have a 93 LS 400 and my 2015 Accord. Uh, I got rid of that. So now my only car is a 93 LS 400. This is the car that changed me because it's my first V8 car. Well, the GS was my first V8 car, but I had it for so little time. I don't, and it was such a piece of junk. I didn't really take a liking to it. My first V8 car that I actually enjoyed, so, you know, my, my first real big body Lexus, you know, this was a changing point for me as far as cars go. I just, it, it came on stock wheels with some JIC Magic coilovers on it. They were imported, of course. They were junk. Ended up rebuilding the JIC Magics with BC cartridges and Swift Springs. 
for a few months, and it rode good. And I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade to BC coilovers and put my swift springs onto the BCs. So I got the suspension switched out. My friend with the Accord in my Accord video, uh, but he bought a Q45 with some Rotas on it. Rota P45s. Decent specs. And because I had helped him so much with his car, he ended up giving me the wheels, which was awesome. For free wheels, they looked, they, they, were, they were good. Free is good. So I ended up painting them silver. They were like a dark, almost like black chrome finish. And they were chipped up and a couple of curb spots on it. I kind of fixed them up a little bit, spray painted them. The silver color actually came out really good. Worked out really well. So at this point, I have a big body Lexus with a V8 from the same year that I was born as my only car. I have a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a newborn. I'm sure I'll catch some uh, negative feedback, but this car handled amazingly. I mean, it was 4,000 pounds. It was giant. It was slow. But the suspension that I put onto it, it pulled strong. It was a great car. I, I really, I really think that this car changed the way I look at cars because up until now I've had a bunch of front wheel drive, Hondas, Volkswagens, new cars, old cars, but this car, it was balanced, as balanced as a 4,000 pound car can be. It was balanced, it was torquey, it made amazing V8 sounds. The one you see is my second favorite V8, second to the S65 in the E92 M3s. But, whole other story. It wasn't very fast, and I could take off-ramps in that car, the long loop off-ramps, quick. I mean, just it just gripped everywhere. And I started trying to get into to sliding a little bit, and it just was, that's when I realized, yeah, this car is not very good. I was like, I'm gonna build a set of wheels for this car, I can do a lot better. And it got to the point where it was a pain to drive. It was too low because I slammed it and I kept lowering it and lowering it and lowering it. So I bought a Jeep. It's just been sitting for a couple years at this point. And the driver's seat was just a hole with a padding around it. It looked like a toilet bowl. So I just took on another project. And I still had the LS400. It was my only car, but I figured a Jeep would be nice for the deep water, rainy days, and snow if we ever get any. And during the middle of the summer, of course, I was driving in the LS. I stopped at Home Depot by my house, and the AC didn't come back on when I got back in the car. In the process of trying to test the pressure switch, I broke the line. The dryer, I guess, connects to the pressure switch. I broke that line and this is a 93 LS 400 and couldn't find it anywhere. I found one in a junkyard from a 92, but that was the Zanke model of the UCF 10 and it wouldn't work. So I decided to sell it. Right before I sold it, I figured out that the issue with the AC was me trying to lower it every other day and I rubbed through the wire that powers the pressure switch. And that was it. I could have fixed that wire and the AC would have worked. But I broke the line, so then I still had to get the line and fix the wire, and I couldn't find the line. So that's when I decided to sell it. I needed something newer to put the kids in. And all I had was this Jeep that didn't have AC from the factory, didn't have power steering, didn't have a rear seat. So I was under the impression when I sold the LS that I could spend some of that money to get the Jeep on the road and be good to go. I spent the money to get the Jeep on the road, and I was not good to go. It was just not the most reliable thing. When I sold the Jeep, it was in good shape. Um, it was a 97 Jeep Wrangler. When I got it, it had 67,000 miles. When I got rid of it, I think I just crossed over 70,000. 67,000 hard miles on it. It was ridden hard and put away wet. I think that's what they say. But... Overall, it was a cool experience to have a Jeep for a little bit. 
I got it running good, where it was reliable enough, but I still couldn't put the kids in it. So I sold the LS, put the money into the Jeep. I had enough left in case I needed to go buy a car. At this point, I got a new job, and the day that I started orientation for the new job is the day that the LS 400 sold, and all I had was a Jeep that wasn't road ready yet. So I Ubered to work on Tuesday, and Wednesday they had to cancel the orientation so I didn't have to go to work. So Wednesday, I used my girlfriend's car, I need to find a car today. And I went to a couple of local buy here, pay here places and I drove a GS400, but this one was too far gone and I think they wanted like $8,000 for it, for like a 98 GS400. So that first IS300 was just a bad idea. But I drove it because I wanted to know what IS300 drove like. And I knew that I kind of wanted something along those lines. Even this thing was kind of beat down. I really liked the IS300 for what it was. Not this particular example, but I liked the car. Well, I was tied between an IS300 and an LS430. So I found an LS430 at a dealership on the other side of town. And I went to take a look at it. And of course, when I get there, it's sold. I saw this IS300. It was red, super clean, and I asked the lady, I was like, what's up with this IS300? She's like, oh, you don't want it. It's got 200,000 miles on it. I drove it. It didn't feel like it had 80,000 miles on it. It really drove great. So the rest of the money from the LS400, I put down on the IS300. And when I got this car, I decided I'm going to do maintenance only. And... I'll get into what I did to the IS in depth when I do the IS video, but for now, you know, I did a lot. The only thing that hasn't been touched on the IS300 at this point is the engine and transmission as far as aftermarket stuff goes. And I love it. I love driving it. I love the way it sounds. Even though it is an automatic, I will swap it eventually. And that will I'll get into that in the IS300 video. I didn't want the car that I you know, cared about to get all torn up, so I bought a 99 ES300, and that's where I'm at now. I have the IS300 and the ES300. Between both cars, I've got almost 500,000 miles on the odometers. You get into either one of them, and they don't feel like 200 plus thousand mile cars. These two cars are what changed my whole outlook on between the LS400 and the IS300, and now the ES, I became a Toyota fan at heart. I'm amazed at how these cars drive with the, the amount of miles that they have on them. It's amazing to me. They make a fantastic vehicle. So I think that, that catches us up with where I am now and why I'm here. I have a lot of plans for this car and I hope that I get to share them. I really want to put this car on a road course one day and just learn to actually drive on a track and drive decently. If you have any questions or suggestions feel free to comment. After this I'm looking forward to talking about why this car that I bought because I needed it turned into the car that I really did fall in love with and I'm excited for that thank you for watching and let me know what you think